another day on lockdown and another day at chores but this time I come across something that's raised a bit of interest and asked a few questions. What is the club in question? Well, it's what's in my hand. Sit down, pen. And it's a wedge. It's a very old wedge. It's a very rusty wedge. And I need to work out exactly how old this thing is. It's an old Vokey wedge. It's had plenty of use. It's had plenty of use in terms of the grooves. And I'm gonna put it in a test up against a brand new wedge. Right, so two wedges looking very, very different and different in age and in theory should be doing things completely different in terms of control. So how often do you change your wedges? And I've got to say from a personal point of view, before I uh, started doing YouTube or watching any type of content at all, my wedges stayed in the bag for years. But we're now led to believe that, I don't know what it is, 50, 60, 70 rounds is it? And you're starting to lose, the, 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 um, the grooves are starting to deteriorate and we're starting to lose control. But for me, like I said, and I've said this on many times over a lot of videos over the last few years, what happens in reality when an average golfer has got these in his hands and the variables are strike, I'm just wondering how much difference are we gonna see with these two wedges? Right then, I think the other thing we'll do is we'll compare these two wedges in terms of feel and sort of maybe forgiveness and uh, how they perform throughout this test as well. I'll hit some of these while we're on and uh, just hit a few sort of half swings with the Vokey. Um, it'd be interesting to see really. I mean, as you know, I'm sort of a, I'm a game, game improvement wedge uh, kind of, play it nowadays I've uh, gone away from these sort of blade style both uh, this Vokey and the Jaws wedge really uh, although the Jaws has got a little bit more mass than the uh, than the Vokey but this feels great and when you're hitting three quarter shots uh, fine in the middle of the club I always think these blade style clubs are great um, would I be able to notice the difference between this and uh, a brand new Vokey I reckon you'd be hard pushed to tell the difference but who knows but uh let me just switch out and see how much difference there is to this brand new Jaws 52 wedge from Callaway came out uh, this year or was it latter part of last year anyway it's not very old um, but the point being it's got a little bit more bulk uh, around it the Jaws wedge let's just hit a couple of similar shots do I feel any difference it's got a different feel it's a it's a less harsh feel I always think that with the Vokey wedges, there's, uh, you don't feel like you're getting a great deal of help out the middle of the club, but then again, that might be all in my mind. Difference between the two, very little at all. The big question is, and I suppose the one that we all want answering really is, when I started in these shots, don't forget, a little bit of a short chip shot, half a swing, and then into a full swing, what difference will we see in terms of performance, the deterioration in those grooves, will it impact on spin, and do we really need to be changing our wedges as often as it's suggested? at this point before I switch out to the uh, Callaway Jaws wedge uh, that absolutely felt fine really happy with the performance of it and uh, should be good in terms of the quality of strikes that we've got to collect the data onto the Callaway Last ball with the Callaway Jaws, and uh, I want to do a bit of a comparison. Which one of these would I prefer in terms of feel? Do you know what? I think I prefer the old Vokey. Now I know what it is you're thinking right now. Hitting from that mat is not what grooves are really designed to do. And if we're going to see if there's any deterioration in them in terms of control, we need some rough and we need some water.
Well, this has been an interesting test, and like I said, uh, maybe not the most scientific, I don't know. This is about the best I can do in terms of trying to create a situation that is the same as what we might find out on the golf course. So yes, we've hit from a mat, we've hit from a rough, a type of rough area, and we've introduced water to the test as well. And like I said, maybe not the most scientific, but for me, it's perfectly adequate to give us some uh, feedback and some data. This is a data-led uh, type of video and review. So this is gonna get a little bit tedious and boring, but I'll go through it as quickly as I can. And we'll start off first of all with what were the full shots with both wedges and data up in front of you now. The averages is probably the easiest way to look at it. They are all sort of carrying in around that sort of 100 mark. That was my sort of uh, goal to try and uh, achieve. Club head speed remained uh, constant or relatively constant again, as did ball speed relevant to club speed. Launch 27.4 with the Jaws, which was the new club, 28 with the old club. 8.1 spin with the Jaws, 8.9 spin, so it actually spun more with the older club. And uh, peak height again on the last figure was again pretty much as um, very, very similar indeed. So next set of numbers up in front of you now. In and around averages again around that 70 yard pitch, uh, club head speed kept consistent between the two or relatively so. Ball speed again was relevant to club speed. 26 launch on the old, club 28 launch on the new. Six and a half spin on the old, six, seven on the new. Again, nothing to split them. 35 peak height, it dropped down a little bit in terms of um, the height compared to that 39 on the uh, on the jaws club so at this stage again for me nothing to split these whatsoever and the last set of numbers in terms of hitting from the mat was just a very sort of a short chip carrying in around well they were almost identical in terms of their averages but there's some variables in there if you want to like i said analyze each shot by all means do so um, but once again that spin number from that little chip shot was actually slightly better with the older club at 2.8 spin. Uh, and again, data for me, which doesn't split them at all. And at this stage, this is the, that was the part of the test that I completed first of all, and I was looking at the data as I was going along. And at this stage, like I said, there was nothing to split them at all. The only variables to be found would have been about my capability, my strike pattern, and my ability to achieve a consistency. I think it would have been strike for strike, I think there'd have been nothing to split these whatsoever. So I knew that we had to introduce one more thing, because as we know, or as I didn't know if I'm being perfectly honest up until uh, not so long ago, I thought grooves produce spin. I am an average golfer and my knowledge is basic. And uh, yeah, I thought grooves produce spin, but in fact, I now know that that's not the case. It's very much about cutting through, removing rough, removing water, dispersing water. And um, so we had to introduce some rough and we introduced some uh, water into the equation. And that's what we did on every shot that I played. I sprayed the club, I sprayed the ball, and I sprayed the, uh, the turf that we were using. And this is what we found, and this is probably the biggest shock in the whole review. So it was a three quarter swing. And the numbers it produced were very, very similar to what it produced in the conditions when it was dry from a clean life from the mat with no, nothing in the way whatsoever. And it didn't affect launch either, 28.3 in terms of launch, uh, the ball 43 in terms of its peak height, six spin on average, uh, six, six spin on average. Here's the numbers now for the old club. So what we've got is uh, slightly quicker ball speeds. Um, we've got a launch of 28.4 as opposed to 28.3. Spin number is 6870, which again is very, very similar indeed. And we've got that peak height of 44 as opposed to 43.6. What I would like to do is try and get just one particular shot. So one with, we've got, a, in fact, we've got a ball speed of 68.1, the first shot that I hit with the old wedge. And we've got 68.8, which is shot number three with the new wedge. And let's just have a look at those details. So 68, Point one was the ball speed. This is the new club, 28 launch, 6.6 six spin, and a 45 peak height. Take that shot now, number three, like I said, 68.8 in terms of ball speed, 25.9 launch, 5.7 spin, and a peak height of 39. There is absolutely nothing that I could find that would split these clubs. 
I can analyze data and go through shot by shot and you can make little movements here, there and everywhere in terms of, well, this did this because of this and this did that because of the other. But the ultimate thing is, and I keep saying it on videos that I've done now for the last two or three years, the problem that we have as average golfers is we don't have the level of consistency to produce a strike that's consistent enough to worry about things like this, to worry about losing. We're, we're, we're potentially, there's 100 to 200 revs of spin difference between each of these shots. That's absolutely nothing in the real world out there on the golf course. If we were talking about a couple of thousand revs of spin, then yeah, maybe, and even then, I'd argue the case it's still something that we need to have a closer look at how much it actually affects our end results. Do we really need to bother still? But for me, this test proves that, once again, far too much attention is paid to numbers that perhaps paint a picture that is not always one that we should be led by. I love data i love looking at it and i love analyzing things and i love the fact that custom fit can produce situations that will make give you the most benefit from the clubs that you try and test but there are always situations that throw themselves up where we've also got to consider balancing that out between the level that we play at and this for me has been another test where a 10 year old wedge has done pretty much exactly the same as what a brand new wedge has done and I don't know, maybe my test was done in a way that uh, was incorrect in some way. I'm sure there's plenty of experts out there will tell me that something was incorrect. But for me, it was a fair old test. I couldn't care which one won, to be honest with you. Like I said, I've never any biased in any of the tests I do. So uh, whichever one came on top was irrelevant. And I was surprised, as you are, I would think. Anyway, like I said, go back through the data, make of it what you will. Comments down below. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did filming it because I found it a real interesting one. As ever, stay safe, be careful, do everything we should be doing and uh, let's get back out in the real world, away from data, on a golf course as soon as we possibly can. Right, I'll see you all soon.